Hi guys, Matt the Rider here. You know, a few years ago, I was out shopping in WH Smith's for college. And then I came across something that just caught my attention. I found this. It's a special edition of the Doctor Who magazine. As you can tell by the cover, it features the Sarah Jane adventures. So, as you would have guessed, as a fan of the show, I bought one. I had a, so I looked through it, and um, and then I came across something that just got my full attention. There's a section in this magazine which features the untold stories. These were stories that were either unmade for Series 5 because of the untimely death of, of Elizabeth Sladen, proposed for Series 4, 5 and 6, or old drafts of the ones that were actually made. And to be honest, some of them are pretty good. Whether they are short, long, corny, exciting, they all have stuff for everyone to like. If you'd like to take a look for yourself, I think they've still got some on eBay. Or if they don't, then just leave a comment below and I'll send, I'll send a scan of the pages to you. Now, unlike my other reviews of the Sarah Jane Adventures, I'm going to talk about them in one video. And plus, if I didn't have them as a separate video, well, I'll be doing it all month. So, instead, I decided to pick my top six choices. Why top six? Well, since there were six episodes in every series, except for that one, I thought, why not pick six episodes? And no, I will not be including the 13th floor that actually got made. So, these are my top six untold stories. Number six, Trinity Wells Investigates. You remember that news anchor who kept reappearing in all of Doctor Who and Sarah Jane Adventures? Yeah, she was gonna get her own adventure. The story was to use the American news anchor returned to the world of investigate journalism, where she made her name before becoming a news anchor. And she believes that she had the scoop of the century concerning strange events occurring recently. There isn't much of a story there, but that's all you really need. I think it would have been nice if this story was told in her perspective. We, we follow her around in her adventure. Maybe in the style of a blog, or a diary, or a documentary, or... Maybe an interview, but not like Love and Monsters. And to be honest, this would have been a fun adventure, not just for the audience, but for the characters as well. I especially love how a spin-off show would link back to the Russell T. Davis era. This would have been a good development for one of our favourite reoccurring characters. Number 5. Meet Mr. Smith. You see, unlike all the other stories of Series 5 that never made, when you look through the pages of this story, it actually feels like a novelised version of the script. And you can obviously tell by the title, this would have featured Mr. Smith in human form. Just, just imagine that. The voice of Mr. Smith, Alexander Armstrong, appearing in human form. It could be one of those fish out of water stories, but for him, since he's a supercomputer, it's fine. Plus, we also get an unusual love subplot between Mr. Smith and Clyde's mum. Obviously, it wouldn't go so well, but to be honest, I think that would be pretty sweet. I think it would be nice for Clyde's mum to try and move away from Paul Langer. Sure, as you read the story on, you do realise there is a villain in there, and to be honest, this villain called Osmo he doesn't really sound that interesting. Plus, I think this shows potential for Skye's character. Maybe end a sort of rivalry between her powers and Mr. Smith's electronics. And there are some comparisons to the Doctor's wife, which I'm pretty sure people might complain about a little if it did actually get released. But then again, that might just be a coincidence. And there is a small foreshadowing for Skye's character, which, will feature, which is to feature in the final episode, but... I'll get to that later. And if this episode ended up being the last episode before Elizabeth Sladen's death, then that that would be really more disappointing than what we already got. But then again, this would have been a good experimental episode to see how much Sarah Jane needs Mr. Smith, and how much Mr. Smith needs Sarah Jane. Number 
Number four. Web of Lies. Now, I'm not so keen when it comes to spiders, which is why I wasn't really a fan of Planet of the Spiders, because, well, I couldn't I couldn't stay strong until I watched the episode. I mean, yeah, the Ragnos was a kind of a spider, but she had human features, and the spiders in Kill the Moon, well, they weren't really spiders. But these ones are actual spiders. Sure, they look like, you know, puppets and you see the strings, but they look like real spiders! And I guess one of the main problems of this idea would be that maybe some kids have arachnophobia so, and I, I don't think they would want to watch this episode. Yeah, but actually, if you read this story plot, it actually sounds cool! Sarah Jane has been acting strangely recently. She's been breaking into Varel, she's been reprogramming Mr. Smith, and she went out to strange places, but being unaware of her actions. In reality, it turns out she's been controlled by the spiders of Metabilius III which has psychologically been linked to her for many years. And we're now strong enough to dominate the Earth. Sarah Jane is controlled to collect fragments of the Metabilius crystals to change all the spiders around the world into giant ones. Holy God! As you can tell, this would have been a good sequel to the Planet of the Spiders in the classic series. Again, it would have been nice to see what actually happened to the spiders since the events in John Perjury's era. I always seem to be thinking what have actually happened to those spiders. I always keep thinking that the Ragnos is somehow related to those spiders. And that perhaps the connection between Sarah Jane and spiders is still in there. What else is great about this episode? There are two drafts of the same story, with the second one written by Gareth Roberts and Clayton Hickman, the same writers who gave us Goodbye Sarah Jane Smith. And it sounds groundbreaking as ever. It's that great. You can tell Russell T. Davis and the other writers were really passionate about this idea. How much hard work they've put into making this into a reality. But as T. Davis said, it refused to work. The story was then used for Goodbye Sarah Jane Smith and, it, and to be honest, it actually makes the story a whole lot better. This is how good this story is. Not just how it turned out, but the history behind it. It was an ambitious storyline that was not destroyed but evolved. Number 3 Don't sit too close to the screen. This was written by Joseph Lidzer, who also gave us the Nightmare Man, and it was going to be a possible replacement for the second story of Series 4. And it was also going to be the departure of Luke Smith going to university. This story features the idea of television and internet control with electricity monsters getting into kids' brains. Keep that in mind for a second. The center of our society is being used for our downfall. Very Stephen Moffat-like if you ask me. And for kids, it's an exception, especially when you realize that we're actually watching a kids show on telly, which features this type of scenario. It also says the creatures were to appear to look cute in the children's television characters. And to be honest, as corny and silly as that sounds, I like that idea. That, that is actually a clever idea. And to round that off, this would have been the closest Russell T. Davis episode since this would have featured Easter eggs of existing children's programs which he then used throughout series 1 to 4. But I guess the problems with this would be it would be a sort of rip-off to the Idiot's Lantern since they had the same idea with television turning against the, the viewers, so... But then again, this one is made for kids. And I think we got a glimpse of this idea in Rani's dream in The Nightmare Man. But like Meet Mr. Smith, we also get Clyde's mum having a new boyfriend, but also has a seven-year-old daughter who's also the centre of this scenario. Again, it's an interesting idea seeing Clyde's family trying to move on from Paul Langer. I guess this idea was then used for Meet Mr. Smith, but as fun as that would be, I think this one serves as a proper test, since we do get people in real life hanging out with others in a different age, but who also have a child in their family. Plus, I think this serves as a bigger task for Clyde to either accept them in his family or not. So, for a potential idea of terrifying kids with the things they watch on television, and some other people, this idea would make me not sit too close to the screen ever again.
Number two, Miracle on Bannerman Road. This show has gone through some ideas for other specials since we've had the comic relief. They made it Halloween special, a Valentine special, and of course, our Christmas special. And what a special we would have had. The story is pretty much a take on the old classic Christmas story, A Christmas Cow by Charles Dickens, but with a little twist. It's Christmas Eve, and the gang are about to head over to the Chandra's for a big Christmas party. After a drowsy day, Sarah Jane falls asleep in the attic. A man, known as the Guide, appears to Sarah Jane, telling her to come with him. He takes her hand and drifts her away. And much like the classic tale, they travel to Sarah Jane's past, her childhood. Her childhood with her aunt, the Chandra's party in the present, and the possible future where a dark legion comes to attack Van Monroe. And I'm not kidding. The Guide was going to be portrayed by Tom Baker. Yes. The fourth Doctor himself is going to make a return to Sarah Jane as the ghost of Christmas past. Just... just let that sink in. Yeah, this idea is then used for the 2010 special with Matt Smith, but to be honest, this would have made much more sense, especially for Sarah Jane. The original draft was meant to be the introduction to Sky. again, left at the doorstep so that they would have seen her become a teenager, and it would have also had the team briefly meet the Doctor again. When Series 5 was scheduled to start production at the end of Series 4, it was decided to introduce Sky fully in the later series. And certain elements of this story was then transferred to Goodbye Sarah Jane Smith and Sky. Now there is an action figure style of this story by FA maker James Blowers on YouTube, and I highly recommend you take a watch on that. It's like watching the idea I read in a magazine come to life. Sure, there were some changes, but I can honestly believe that that was the original stories the original writers wanted to see. This is one Christmas present that was never given, but we can still think of it on Christmas night. Before I reveal my top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Number 1. The Battle of Banman Road. This was originally meant to be the series 5 finale, and by god this feels like one hell of a big ending. This episode features the return of the trickster for one last time, and it would turn out he has been manipulating all the events all this time. We would have also found out that Sky, in some way, is the trickster's child. My god, imagine that! The face of the trickster on the body of an innocent child! We would have also found out who the shopkeeper was in the story. I think it was said he would have been revealed to have been a servant to the trickster. And when it gets dark, it gets dark. This would have been Clyde and Ronnie's final departure, Mr. Smith blown up, Bannerman Road burned down, a dark tower over Ealing, and Sarah Jane would have moved in a farmhouse in the style of Age of Ultron and Logan. What the flying hell? What else makes this story good? Fans of the show have been making their own interpretation of that story. I've only managed to come across two draft scripts of this story, and they all sound really, really good finales. One of them, I think, has an idea to have Luke Smith turn out to be gay, and honestly, I think that would have been a nice turn to children's television, which doesn't come until Doctor Who 2017 in series 10. But to top it all off, this episode was to include a reunion of all the characters that have appeared throughout all five seasons. Maria Jackson, Alan Jackson, K9, The Shopkeeper, Gita, Haresh, and strangely enough, Joe Grant and her grandson! Wow! Holy God, what a wonderful moment that would have been! If this was the end, then there is no better, powerful, beautiful way than to say goodbye in what we would have had. Does that mean I still hate the end of the show we got? Probably not. I mean, 
on the better side, at least the show managed to end on a high, happier note. Whilst this one, we would have had Sarah Jane and Mr. Smith move to the countryside, and they would have had to continue the show in the countryside. And to be honest, if they had to continue the show with that ending, I don't think any of us would be happy. Because Sarah Jane Adventures are in Bannerman Road. And in Bannerman Road, they should remain. We're going to end the series with Sarah Jane moving into a different location. Then you should have ended there. I think it was a fitting idea from the man who never was to end on Bannerman Road. And to see this beloved location burned down to the ground. And to have the adventures somewhere else would not be the same. Sarah Jane lives in Bannerman Road. And she always will. Plus, if you wanted to see more of her adventures, just watch the ones we already have. I mean, they're still here. Or, if you like, make up your own. Through media, through audio, through novels, through drawings, through comics, the stories will go on forever. But we can all agree on one thing. This story would have been a fitting conclusion to the first five series of the beloved BAFTA Award winning kids show. Are there any I missed? Well, leave them in the comments below and explain why they're your favourite. Be sure to leave a comment, like and share this video. And if you want to see more of my videos, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.